Okay, we are recording and we'll go ahead and start this special weather briefing for Sunday, April 3rd, 2022. And my name again is uh, Miranda Sulve, and I'm a meteorologist with the National Weather Service in Spokane, Washington. So our main impact for this special weather briefing is the potential for some uh, strong winds and some heavy snow coming tomorrow. Our main impacts for the winds, we're looking for uh, potential for areas of blowing dust, localized restrictions to visibilities, uh, the potential for power outages and tree damage, crosswinds that'll make our travel difficult, especially those typical high profile vehicles and impacts to people that might be on lakes. And then we're getting into the drier uh, season, uh, pre uh, green up, so we have grass fire potential and uh, thunderstorm potential with this system coming in as well. And any of those thunderstorms could produce some locally stronger gusts that could pro uh, pose problems of their own. In addition to the wind, we have the snow potential for the mountains, uh, heavy wet snow. The uh, most significant snow is expected over towards the Cascades where we could see about an inch an hour because we go into overnight tonight into Monday morning, especially around the, the crest like Stevens Pass. And Sherman and Lookout could also see some moderate accumulations. What's changed since our previous briefing? Uh, for the winds, uh, we want to emphasize a little bit stronger wind threat added earlier in the day. We'll have a first push of some of these strong wind gusts in the morning as the precipitation is decreasing and the front's pushing in. That could be around 7, 8, 9, 10 a.m. when we could see those starting to really pick up with that initial push. And then another increase as we go through the afternoon with the peak of the system. And uh, we issued a high wind watch yesterday for uh, for the Monday system. We'll be looking at the details today and we'll make our decisions on possible upgrading those to warnings or advisories. And we added the mention of the potential for some localized visibilities down to a quarter mile with blowing dust, but that would be localized, we think, and not quite, you know, not, not too common, but still something to look out for. And we also issued a winter storm warning for the Cascades for 2 p.m. today. Sunday through 8 a.m. Tuesday. And I'm going to load a loop here and hopefully people can see it here. I just wanted to give a timing on the uh, on the winds here as we, before we get into more of the details. Well, these are kind of details, but uh, overall, people are, have been asking about the wind speeds and uh, the wind directions. And if you look at this loop, through here today. This is looking at one, just one of the models. This is the uh, one of the HRR, the high resolution models that just goes through 5 p.m. on Monday at this point. But it is showing this increase in winds from the southwest as we go through 10 a.m. and it becomes more westerly as we go into the afternoon and those uh, sustained winds peak around 20 to 30 miles per hour across the basin into the Spokane area, Palouse, and Lee the Cascades, and down towards the, uh, um, as you look towards the Elsie Valley and Blues and Camas Prairie. And I'll pause that, and then we'll move to the next slide here. And I'll show a loop of the gusts, again, from 12 a.m. Monday, so late tonight through uh, 5 p.m. Monday afternoon, showing those peak winds developing in the morning and uh, then really cranking up as we go in the afternoon, uh, 40 to 50 locally to 60 will be possible. And we'll send these out with the slides and loops so you can get a better look at the timing and the details. But as I said, this is just one of the, the models that we're looking at. And, uh, but it's a general representation of what is, is possible.
So again, here is the just the overall static wind gust forecast for the peak wind gust forecast for Monday. Uh, generally, a lot of 50 to 60 uh, gust potential uh, across the region, a little less across the sheltered northern valleys and uh, Metal Valley and some of those areas. But we're focusing in on the basin, Spokane, Coeur d'Alene area, Palouse down into the Elsie Valley, Camas Prairie. Sustained speeds about 20 to 35 from the southwest. And then here's what those kind of impacts you might see at those various wind speeds. Generally, the 40 to 50 is some minor impacts. Generally, you can see some isolated, the scattered power outages and the down limbs or trees, and then the impacts of the, to the crosswinds and uh, the moderate impacts, which is the more widespread potential as we go into tomorrow. Numerous power outages if possible and some moderate tree damages and other areas of uh, uh, problems for the high profile vehicles and, and areas of blowing dust. And overall, here's our here's the impact outlook map with the some moderate impacts across a broad portion of uh, the southern portions of Washington into the central and southern panhandle with winds and blowing dust and then some mountain snow. And we highlighted a major potential just to kind of at least highlight that a little bit more just so it stands out with the heavy snow and winds over towards the Cascade potential. And then uh, less of impacts across the northern tier, but regardless of those precise speeds, you know, if there's any moist soil or if there's any old trees or anything, this, there's a lot of moisture up there potentially from all the snow from the winter and moist soils that regardless of the precise speeds, there can still be significant impacts. So here's some probabilities of the wind speeds uh, thresholds being met across portions of Washington. Here's specifically central Washington. And we tried to highlight where there is little changes from the previous briefing, but everybody generally is expecting to see a uh, wind gust over 40 miles per hour and a uh, good chance for over 50 miles per hour in all these locations. Uh, went a little bit down around Omak, Wenatchee, Moses Lake, but still a pretty high potential there and uh, increased a little bit at the Ritzville area. And as you get above the 60 mile per hour range, it's not the highest possibility, but except for around Waterville where they typically can get some pretty strong winds up there. And looking at the probabilities for Eastern Washington, a similar uh, story with pointing out the Colville Deer Park area where there's less of a threat of those really significant winds. Uh, maybe, you know, over near 30, up to 40 or so is the more common potential. And then further south, Spokane, Pullman, Pom Pomeroy have that higher potential for those impacts with uh, those stronger winds. And then across uh, North Idaho, uh, kind of a similar story with the North not seeing as high of a, a risk and stronger potential down towards Lewiston and Winchester on the Elsie Valley and those central uh, or the Camas Prairie. And we showed this the other day, but this is the comparison uh, to the March 28th windstorm that had widespread gusts of 50 to 60 miles per hour. It kind of correlates to what our forecast has for a portion of our region for this system and had a lot of blowing dust across the Columbia Basin near visibility in some spots. We had a pretty big pile up along State Route 22 and there were a lot of large trees down in Spokane County with numerous uh, power lines down and some road blockages. So overall this winds are comparable to that storm last year at the end of March. And moving on. So the highlights some of those risks for the system, the areas of blowing dust across the basin along I-90, 
26 and 395. We could have the localized visibilities <clears throat> down to a quarter mile. So like the top image in this is more of what we're commonly expecting with the areas of blowing, blowing dust, but the bottom image is more locally what is possible with, if we see those visibilities down to a quarter mile or so. And then with the front coming in and the instability and the whole uh, vigorous system, where it's where we have the potential for some thunderstorms in the mid morning through the afternoon across eastern Washington, the Idaho Panhandle, and potentially near the Cascade Crest. This is the image from the Storm Prediction Center on here of what their general thunder potential is. And they have a little bit over near the west side, and some of that could creep to the to the Cascade Crest. But with all that snow potential there, we, you know, I don't in the cooler atmosphere. I'm not sure if that would get any lightning or anything like that. But we could see the impacts from very strong winds. We already are in a strong uh, wind pattern, so any of those thunderstorms could really pull down some damaging winds, even in areas that we don't wouldn't might not necessarily put out a high wind warning, but a wind advisory, but still localized with thunderstorms. Those could pull down those pretty strong winds. And then lightning and grapple will be the other potential impacts, which are less extreme, but still potential. And still highlighting the potential increased risk for grass fires, especially if anybody's doing any small backyard fires, it's probably not you know, uh, the best time, but overall, because that, that can increase the risk of the spread in this unusually dry spring and pre-green up that we are in. And looking at the mountain snows, this is the image from created this morning. The snow mounts are not too much different than what they were the previous briefing, but potential for over two feet of snow near Stevens Pass and uh, about six to eight near Lookout and a little bit less across the uh, uh, northern mountains, but still potential for impacts. And as I said, we have a winter storm warning for the Cascade Crest right now. And uh, we could see snowfall rates of an inch per hour from this evening late tonight into tomorrow morning across Stevens Pass and with the winds there of 20 to 25, gusts 30 to 50 possible, it could lead to some uh, down trees, power lines, reduced visibilities, and overall pretty uh, tricky conditions in that area. And I just wanted to highlight, you know, for going into the potential, starting to clean up for any of the potential impacts. Here is what the wind gust forecast is for Tuesday. Still pretty breezy with gusts around 25 to 35 uh, miles per hour in the afternoon, sustained winds uh, from the west at 10 to 20. So I just want a little, little shout out to those potential as we go to potential cleanup time frame. And then after that, the winds are much lighter as we go into to Wednesday. So summarizing what we have going on, we have the strong windstorm uh, for Sunday evening through Monday night. Uh, first starting with the snow tonight and some breeziness and then the winds start to become more impactful as we go into tomorrow morning as that front is pushing in and the precipitation precipitation is winding down around 8, 9 a.m. or so. Might be a little lull in the in the gusts for a brief hour or, or hour and a half or so and then they ramp up again in the afternoon and remain pretty strong through the evening. And then there's a slow, gradual decrease into the overnight, but they still remain pretty breezy. And then they're breezy again as we go into uh, Tuesday. And then our impacts, we have pretty good to you know moderate confidence in the scattered power outages, tree limbs down, impacts of some high profile vehicles and areas of blowing dust. Lower confidence in that there'll be numerous power outages and tree, tree damage and really reduced visibility from dust, but that potential is there. 
And regardless of the uh, precise wind speeds, impacts you know might you know and can can incur regardless of the precise speeds. And uh, so we have winds increasing Monday morning, especially as that rain's ending and peaking in the afternoon, and then winter travel expected over Stevens Pass. So those are the slides and the briefing that I have to at this moment, and I will unmute our good folks and uh, let folks, once I unmute you, ask any questions or any comments, and you have to unmute yourself. You should be unmuted now. I can hear you. Yeah, this is Mike from the um, Washington State DOT and the Spokane TMC, and I'm just wondering when or if this would become, would go from a watch to an advisory? For the winds? Yes. Yeah, we are looking at that today and we'll be making a decision on the precise uh, details of it as we go into this later this morning and afternoon, but we'll get that out, those out as early as we can to give y'all as much heads up, but I, you know, the impacts are gonna be there is whether, you know, so, We'll be getting, we'll be working on that as soon as we get out of this briefing. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Hey, this is uh, Kip, Kip Hill at the Spokesman Review. Um, and I may have missed this. Do you have an idea of the precipitation amounts in like the metro areas of, of Spokane and Coeur d'Alene that falling is rain? I don't have those numbers in front of me, but I think they're in around a tenth to a quarter of an inch, I believe is the amount. But I, and if there's any thunderstorms, those could be locally heavier, but the best threat will be late tonight into tomorrow morning, and then it becomes more scattered in nature because the winds will override most of the precipitation potential, making it more scattered tomorrow afternoon. But I can get you those details if you, I can send some details for, to you in the briefing slides as well, if that'd be helpful, because we'll send out the summary of these afterwards. That, that would be helpful, and I appreciate it very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions this lovely, cloudy Sunday morning? All right. If that's all we have, then... Uh, We'll be here 24 seven if you have any questions or if you need any help with anything, just let us know. Thank you so much.